In this video, we're going to consider modelling with exponential growth or decay. Why might we want to do this? Well, in our universe, there are many different processes which can be described exponentially. For example, we might be asked to describe the change in a population over time. And if that population is growing in an unimpeded manner, then we might have an exponential graph that might look something like this. Similarly, we might be describing the number of individuals within a population which are infected by some kind of disease. We might also be talking about some kind of decay process. A key example is radioactive decay, where a substance is losing mass at a proportion to the current mass, and therefore we get exponential decay. So here the mass is decreasing over time. To describe all of these processes, we need something called the exponential growth or decay equation. This equation always arises from some kind of differential equation. In this equation, we've got dp by dt. That's describing the rate of change of the population over time. And if that rate of change of population over time is proportional to the current population, then we're going to have some kind of exponential process. You'll remember from GCSE that this proportion sign becomes equals k, where k is the constant of proportionality. In this context, k is so important that we give it a name. We say that k is called the growth constant, or some people call it the rate of change. Now, if k is a positive number, then it leads to exponential growth. So here, our population would grow over time. Whereas, if k is negative, then we have exponential decay. So our population would decrease over time. Note that as k increases, dp by dt also increases. You can see that in the equation here. If k gets bigger, then dp by dt will get bigger. In other words, as k, our growth constant gets larger, the rate of change of population growth over time will also get larger. So this explains why we call k the growth constant, because the rate of change of population over time only depends on two things, k and p. k, the growth constant, and p, the size of the population at that particular moment in time. Let's integrate this differential equation by doing something called separating the variables. So we take this differential equation and we bring all of the p variables onto one side, the left hand side in this case, and all of the other variables onto the other side to be with dt. Let's look at this separation of variables in a little more detail. We multiply both sides by dt. That cancels out the dt on the left hand side. There's an invisible one on the left hand side there. That means that when we divide by p on both sides, we end up with 1 over p on the left hand side and the p's on the right hand side cancel out. We integrate both sides, so we're left with the integral of 1 over p with respect to p and the integral of k with respect to t. So integrating 1 over p with respect to p, we get the natural log of p and integrating k with respect to t, we get kt. Remember, k is just a constant. For example, k might be equal to 3, in which case we'd have 3t. And of course, we mustn't forget that constant of integration, the plus c here. Let's call this equation equation number 1. Let's say that when t equals 0, the population p is equal to p naught. Let's call that the initial population size, the size of the population when the time is zero. 
we can substitute this into equation number one. So substituting t equals zero and p equals p naught into this equation number one here, we'd end up with the natural log of p naught and we sub in t equals zero. Well, k times zero is just zero. So we see that c, the constant of integration, is the natural log of p naught. Let's substitute that back into equation number one. Here's equation number one. Substituting in C gives us this equation. Now, we want to get rid of that natural log on the left-hand side. Remember that the natural log is log to the base E. And the opposite of taking log to the base E is taking exponentials. So let's do that to both sides. So I'm saying e to the power of the left-hand side is equal to e to the power of the right-hand side. Next, I'm going to split up this exponential on the right-hand side. We remember that this plus sign can be separated into two exponentials. Remember that when we multiply two exponentials, we add the powers. I'm just doing that process in reverse. On the left-hand side, the exponential and the natural log as inverse functions will cancel one another out, leaving us with the argument p, the input here. Why would we do this? Well, it allows us to write p equals. We can simplify this a bit further. We can simplify this e to the power of natural log of p naught term. Again, the exponential and the natural log as inverse functions will cancel each other out, leaving us with p naught. Let's just swap over these two items for a slightly neater result. Here we have it. This is what we call the exponential growth or decay formula. Let's just analyze the different parts of this formula. So we have p, that's the size of the population at any time t p naught, that's the size of the population when t equals zero. We'd call that the initial population. And then we have E, that's just Euler's number, it's about 2.7. And we have K, that's what we call the growth constant. It's just a, a constant number, a fixed number. And T stands for time. So this is what we call the exponential growth or decay formula. So if you ever are in the situation where your rate of change of population over time is proportional to the current size of the population, you'll end up with this kind of equation. So remember, we called k the growth constant, or some people call it the rate of change. And if k is greater than zero, then we have exponential growth. So our graph of our population over time might look something like this. You can see that as time goes on, our population is always increasing over time. Whereas if k is negative, then we have exponential decay. So our graph of our population over time might look something like this. You can see our population is decreasing over time. Both of these are examples of exponential graphs. It's just that when k is positive, our gradient is always positive, And in fact, our gradient itself is always increasing as t increases. Whereas when k is negative, we have exponential decay. So our gradient is always negative. Let's look at these exponential graphs in a little bit more detail. Here, I'm changing the growth constant k. I'm starting with a very negative value of k. And now you can see that k has become a positive value and you can see the really distinct change in the shape of the graph as k goes from negative to positive. So in summary, if our rate of change of population over time is proportional to the size of the current population, then we have dp by dt is k times p, where k is called the growth constant. And this can be used to describe all sorts of exponential processes. So it might be a population growing over time of 
rabbits or bacteria. It might be describing the spread of a disease over time in terms of the number of infected individuals within a population. Or we might be talking about some decay process. For example, the mass of a radioactive isotope changing over time. Remember we call K the growth constant or the rate of change. And if K is positive, we have exponential growth so our y value, our population, will increase over time. Whereas if k is negative, we have exponential decay. So our y value will decrease over time. So by separating the variables, by integrating both sides, we end up solving our differential equation to end up with this exponential growth or decay formula. Remember, P describes the population at a particular moment in time, T. P0 describes the initial population. K is this fixed number, this growth constant, and T stands for time. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up, leave your comments down below, and subscribe to this channel so you'll be the first to know when we release our next videos.